David from the Redneck Garage. Well, I'm out on the back patio having a cup of coffee and trying to decide what to do today. And uh, I thought we'd talk about engine components. Now, let's take a quick look back of why uh, I need to do engine work. So if that's what your Jeep sounds like, that ain't good. <laughs> it's not, that's bad. But you got it turned around. How awesome is that? You want to know what was causing the uh, noise? That would be it, Mr. Uh, I don't know if that's one or four, but there is no piston left. It's just a rod pin. It's gone. That piston is completely gone, and you can see how badly it scored the uh, block with it going up and down. And yeah, that's the noise. So clearly, we have issues. <laughs> After that point, after I got the motor pulled out and we took it down to market, it's very clear that it's going to need a full engine overhaul and a sleeve kit put in it. I searched around for the best type of engine kit uh, if I was going to buy pieces from AutoZone or O'Reilly's. And, and the best, most economical, and easiest thing to do was to order a full engine kit from Engine Tech. Uh, engine Tech had everything that we needed in one kit on the master kit with pistons, rod bearings, main bearings, uh, oil pump, timing chain, and I even was able to order extra parts like push rods and down at the machine shop Mark has a new rod to put on the pistons because actually number four cylinder actually bent the rod a little bit. So that's super cool. I appreciate Engine Tech. They are going to be our supplier this year for all the engine components. Awesome. So now that we've got all our engine components in, let's just take a look at some of those. All right, so here's all our parts that we got. The uh, master kit from Engine Tech. Got rings. We got all kinds of stuff. Plugs. Here's a piston, and Mark will be taking these and putting them on the rods. So I got a new rod from Engine Tech where it blew out that back one. Super cool. One thing that Mark uh, pointed out: these are the fancy pistons. I think that's a technical term because it's got the Teflon coating here for anti-scuff on the cylinder walls, and this is the. Uh, on the old one, this is what actually broke off originally were the skirts. The skirts broke off of it and then they just kept driving the crap out of it. Alright, Mark's going to describe what it looks like when one has a catastrophic failure. Well, this one actually got dropped and the skirt broke off of it. But basically, this is what happened to yours. Um, the skirt breaks out just like that. Mm. Um, and you just keep driving it. You might hear it knocking then, but if you actually quit driving it then, you could just buy a new piston and put it in it and keep rocking. But because they drove it so far, it just fell apart. And yeah, then the rest of it just disintegrated. And then you were screwed. Yes. Yes. Here's some of the other parts. There's the rod that I bought. Um... What is that? Oh, bearings. It comes with everything. So I was really happy with the Engine Tech uh, kit. Everything came in it, ready to put this thing back together. So Mark's finishing up the machining, and then we'll have another video on that. Super cool! Okay, so that's awesome. Everything's from Engine Tech, and we shouldn't have any problems with consistency. Uh, great quality. Awesome, awesome, awesome. One of the things that we bought also was a crank kit. Um, rather than trying to turn the old one, it was in really bad shape. I just went ahead and bought a uh, crank kit from Rock Auto. It comes with bearings, and it's ready to go in. Okay, so this is what they call a boring bar, and Mark laughed at me because I kept arguing with him that it doesn't look anything like a bar. It's more like a vertical milling machine, and that's what I would call it, but in the industry they call it a boring bar, and it's a pretty cool piece of equipment that he's got there. This is the fourth pass on this. This will be 80 thousandths that we've cut out. So we've got about 80 more to go. This is basically your engine sleeve. Uh, he cuts down the cylinder walls for that to fit in there and then you cut the inside of the sleeve down and you make it fit after you install it. 
Okay, we've got the counterboard done for the sleeve. It's actually about 4,000 smaller than the actual sleeve. And we're going to see if we can press it in. There's the crack. A few other bad spots. I think you can see the one down there. There's a line right there. And... Well, you can't see that. Oh well. Let's get it in the press. Press it in. Okay, we're all set up here, I think. And it's in. As you can see it's maybe maybe three quarters of an inch sticking up still. I will take it back home, put it in a boring bar, cut the top off, and then I will pour it out to the new pistons. Here's the block! <clears throat> he said this thing works something. I don't know what it does. It's like a gaugey, weirdy thingy. He checks like the inside of the cylinder with it. But that's super cool. Look at that sleeve. You'd never know that there was a sleeve in there. If you were looking at that, it'd be almost impossible to tell, huh? What do you think? That guy did a really good job. <laughs> I think he did too, man. That looks freaking awesome. Look at that. And he's honed all these other cylinders with this boring bar vertical milling machine, which I would call it. And the only thing left is to resurface the top of the block, correct? Not correct. All right, what else we got left? Uh, to finish honing the cylinders to the final bore size. Oh, we haven't done that yet? No, but within a few thousand. Oh. You got to use a boring bar for that? No, I'm using that hone right there. Oh, look at that hone. Holy crap, that's cool. Wow. Is that new? Uh, somewhat new. It's new stones. Oh, okay. Put new stones on it. Yeah. So you'll use this and the uh, mic to determine if it's the correct... Oh, okay. So super close, he's just got to hone it with this. That's what's going to put the little cross edges in there that you see. Oh, okay. So we're done with the boring bar anyway. He's done with all of that, and then he's going to use the uh, hone there. Hone? Hone. Hone? Hone. Call hone? What? Hone. He's going to call the hone. He's going to use the hone to uh, get the few thousandths of an inch and the cross hatching pattern in there. That's super cool. And then you have to do the top of it? Okay, then he's got to resurface the top of it. And then the block's ready to get put back together. Super cool! Alright, that was awesome. So, you know what? We've got all the parts that we need. We've got the motor that's just about ready to be put back together. And that's going to be our next set of videos on the engine is to be able to reassemble it and drop that baby back into the truck so we can drive it around a little bit. <laughs> That'll be super cool. Anyway, that's going to be the next thing coming up as far as the engine uh, videos go. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Keep! Turn your wrenches.